Good afternoon. Well, not afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Hope all is well. Hope everyone's doing all right. Got a few people still coming in, so let's give them a chance. All right, looks like we are good. Last class, we finished off 7-3. So it looks like we'll do 7-4 today. And of course, if I say anything wrong, let me know. I believe this is where we are today. Let me take a look at one other thing. 8-1. OK. So we'll do 7-4 today and you know, call it a day. All right, so 74 estimating the population proportion with confidence intervals. Where's my P? All right, so confidence intervals are often reported as the estimate plus or minus some amount. So example, 53% plus or minus 2.7%. And this is the symbol for plus or minus. So the sum amount, that 2.7 in this case, um, represents the margin of error. All right, the margin of error tells how far from the population value our estimate can be. Yes. Uh, yes, that would always come last in your equation. Yep. Someone asked with the sum amount, or in other words, the margin of error come last. Yes, you'll have your initial part or initial value or your actual percentage, and then plus or minus your give or your margin of error. Mm -hmm. Scroll up too far, let me know. But a confidence interval provides two pieces of information. One, it gives us a range of plausible values for the population parameter. So if you were to actually calculate the plus and the minus, this is what that would look like in the red. You would minus 2.7 from the 53 and then add 2.7 to the 53. That gives you your range.
it also gives us a confidence level, which is our level of confidence in this interval. And then lastly, the confidence level measures the capture rate for our method of finding confidence intervals. All right, selecting a margin of error. So it's similar to the empirical rule. Remember the empirical rule, we go one standard deviation out, 68% of our data, two standard deviations out, 95% of our data, and then three standard deviations out, you know, plus or minus. Um, it would be 99.7% of our data. So here, um, our standard deviation is our standard error. So that would be 68%, we go one standard error. 95% confidence interval for two standard errors and then 99.7 for three standard errors. And all of this will make more sense once we get to examples and put numbers on it. All right. So for 99% confidence level, the margin of error, margin of error is 2.58 standard um, errors. Yeah. And then 95 points, 95%, 1.96 or about two, 90%, 1.645, and then 80%, 1.28. So we're going to use this chart right here to be able to help us to calculate our um, margin of error. And like I said, all this stuff is going to come in. You know, we're going to bring all the pieces together in a second. Right now, we're just copying. And you'll see in a second that, you know, we're going to mention Z asterisks. And that's what these represent, Z asterisks. Your margin of error.
All right, scrolling up. So now we're done with the chart. All right, so the formula for oh, somebody in the chat. Yep, no problem. You don't have to apologize. All right, we can wait a second. Not a big deal. Yep, not a problem, not a problem. So let's look at finding these confidence intervals. The formula is right here, P hat plus or minus M. M is going to be our margin of error. Don't forget P hat is your sample proportion. Um, so the way we calculate our margin of error is by taking that Z asterisk and that's what we're talking about from here. So they're going to tell us the confidence level that they want to have. And then from there, that means we use one of these numbers over here. Um, let me go back up. Okay. Hold on. Trying to make sure I didn't. OK, there we go. All right. And um, then our, our standard error estimate, take the square root of p hat times one minus p hat all over lowercase n, lowercase n is our sample size. I'm scrolling up some. I mentioned this already, but there it goes written. S E E S T is an estimated standard error. Scrolling up, everybody okay? I don't need that.
All right, so here's that whole question. Don't know if you want to copy it all that or not, but here it is. And I'll just read through it. Recall that Morse believed that the proportion of E's in the English language was 0.12, and that our sample showed that 118 E's out of 876 randomly chosen letters from a modern day book. Uh, find a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of E's in the book. If the proportion of E's in the book is consistent with Morse's 0.12, is, I said if, is the proportion of E's in the book consistent with Morse's All right, scrolling up some. So first move for us is to find our estimated standard error. So we need p hat. Um, I'll wait a few more seconds, make sure everybody's done copying before I keep going. All right, so our estimated standard error, the square root of p hat times one minus p hat over n. So p is gonna be at point 12, the proportion um, of E's in the English language. But p hat comes from our sample. So our sample is 118 out of 876 E's. So that's where we will get P at from, plug it in. As a matter of fact, 0.12 will be a, um, what we're assuming the population will be, but it's not actually P, so I'll take that back, sorry about that. But that's what we're trying to see um, according to Morse's um, estimation. So anyway, so P hat though is 118 over 876, do the work or any calculator I should say, and that'll give us 0 0.0115349. So don't forget as far as how many decimal places you go here. Um, if MathLab asks you for your standard error, your estimate standard error, um, they may say four decimal places or whatever, but you, whenever you're doing calculation with it, you wanna go out as many decimal places as possible. Notice I went out seven decimal places. Um, you don't have to go out that far, but you do wanna go out at least four or five, maybe even six to make sure you're as close to the most accurate answer possible. Um, once again, it, you do not wanna do two or three because you're gonna perform calculations with this. And the more you calculations you perform with an estimated number, uh, you know, a truncated number, um, the further and further you get away from the actual answer. So you do wanna go out four or five, I would say five or six um, when you do your calculations. And then in your final answer, they may, you know, you may round that to two decimal places or three. But when you're doing your calculation, you always go, it's safer just to go out five or six decimal places. All right. So we want to find the margin of error. And I could have done, could have did one, two, three, as far as steps.
So next we're going to find the margin of error. Remember that's Z asterisk times your standard, your estimated standard error. So we get our asterisks from our Z asterisks from the fact that we want a 95% confidence interval. Go to your chart, 95% confidence interval. That means we're going to multiply our standard, your estimated standard error by 1.96. And so that's what we get right here. All right, questions on step two. All right, so now find the interval boundaries. You got P hat plus or minus your margin of error. All right. So P hat was 0.1347. That margin of error is at 0 0.022608. And Math Lab will let you know how many decimal places they want for your upper end of your interval and the lower end of your interval. But to find the upper end, you add 0 0.0226, and that came from here. And then to find the lower end, you subtract 0 All right, conclusion. Sure, I'm going to copy and trying to get the whole conclusion in. Am I still copying the dark blue? All right, there we go. So we are 95% confident the proportion of ease in the modern book is between 0.112 and 0.157. Those are these values right here. This interval captures 0.12. So in other words, 0.12 is in between those two numbers. This shows that it is plausible that the population proportion of ease in the book of point is 0.12 as more suggested. So because the 0.12 is in between or in your range, is in between 0.11 and 0.15, then um, it shows that it is plausible that Morse is correct. All right, questions, questions, questions. All right. So, oh, they must only have one example in the book. Okay, well, let's go revisit the process, make sure we're okay. So, um, basically, there are three steps. Can you go back to the black part? I wasn't finished yet. Oh, you weren't finished? Okay, I'm sorry. Let me know when you finish and we'll do a recap.
Okay, thank you. Not a problem at all, not a problem. So let's do a recap on the steps in this, in this uh, section. You probably only gave one example. That's probably why I stopped there. So let's just make sure we're good. So you want to find your estimated standard error. And that's given by this formula right here. P hat is always based on your sample proportion. And it has to be given to you in some form. Either they'll just give it to you straight up or they'll do like they did here when they say 118 out of the sample you chose. Um, and then you just have to divide it out and get the decimal value. So once you have your P hat, you can go ahead and do this work. Um, 876 was the number of sample, number of the sample. And once again, this is done by a calculator. So uh, you don't have to worry about how you would do that in your mind. So then you will find your margin of error. That's your Z asterisk um, times your standard estimated error, which is what we found here. So you get that from the chart though, and they have to tell you what confidence interval. So that's gonna be in the problem somewhere. And once again, you go back to this chart. If it said 99% confidence interval, we would have used 2.58. If it had said 90, we would have did 1.645. Same thing if it had said 80, we would have did 1.28. This one said 95, so we did 1.96. And I put this about two right here because I think sometimes in math lab or in the book, it says about two. Um, if that's the case, then we're talking about the 1.96. Um, that's just if they reference it in a wording or something like that. So. All right, so let me raise this. I'm trying this. I oh, didn't need to do that. Put it back. There you go. All right. So multiply those together. You'll get your margin of error that you're going to add and subtract to P hat. That's the same P hat that we use in here. And you add and subtract it to them to find your upper end and lower end of your interval. And then from there, you answer the question, whatever it is that they ask you. Um, in this case, they want to know if Morse's theory was validated or valid. Um, statement and according to our 95% confidence interval. And so it is because that 0.12 is in between it. If 0.12 was not in it, let's say if he had said 0.2, then we would have said the opposite. Um, the interval does not capture the 0.2. Um, so it's not plausible, you know, that, you know, Morse was correct or whatever. So, yeah, that's how you would do it. Questions on the process. So I know some questions may not show up until you start doing some work in it. So keep that in mind as well. Um, but that is it. That's the only type of problems that are in 7.4. You know, making sure you know how to develop or create your confidence interval. So next class, um, I will open up the floor for questions first. See if anybody tried anything out throughout the weekend since we just closed out a chapter. Um, your test, though, is not on chapters, just chapter seven. I don't believe it should be seven and eight. Let me see how I have it set up for this class. And if you sent me an email within the last day or so, give me a chance to get caught up. I got behind on my email, so I'm in the process of getting that caught up today. Yes, so the next test will be on seven and eight. So, yeah, yeah. so we're not looking at a test right now. But, so we'll talk about how we're going to do that as we get closer to it. But um, questions before we close out today? Is everybody good? Everybody straight? Okay. So take advantage of the fact that I'm not, you know, filling up the whole class time with content, new content. I know some people could use the time to get caught up because we still have a few people that, you know, are uh, where we would like to be right in the course. So um, make sure you use this time wisely and use it to get caught up. And um, yeah, man, it's countdown time. It's countdown time. And so we done closed out Well, this is week 10. So only got a few more weeks left. So make sure we get on that grind and knock out everything. So if you guys are good, I'm good. Uh, have a great weekend. Be safe. And I will see you on Monday.
Have a good one. Thanks. You do the same. Take care. Thanks. You have a good one as well. I have a question. If we do well on four exams, do we have to? Yes. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability to exempt people from the final any longer. Um, I can drop lowest test grade. I can do something like that. And I always do something like that. Um, you know, whether I mention it or not, I go in and I do stuff to, I don't do anything that will hurt anybody, but whatever I do will help everybody. So I always do it, go in there and make adjustments to, to see if I can get the best grades out of everybody. Um, but I don't have the luxury of exempting people from the final exam. Uh, they took that right from us about well, five, six years ago. I don't know why, but yeah, they stopped us from doing that. So yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, but you know, I got to keep uh, feeding my kids. So, <laughs> but yep, yep. But I will make sure that uh, whatever process goes down is the easiest possible. So yeah, for sure. Good question though. <laughs> All right. And will the final be online? In per online, everything will still stay online. We'll um, proctor it you know, through Zoom and everything like that. So all, none of the process or anything will change. Yep. Yep, not a problem, not a problem. All right, you, you have a good one as well. All right, everybody good? good. All right, take care.